Welcome guys to episode 7 with me Telis Katsugianos and we will be doing fly tying as usual and we're back to salmon flies and this episode is a little bit special for me because we're gonna tie my favorite fly uh, hands down all categories uh, it's black and orange uh, and of course you can tie it in many many different variations and today I tend to fish them and tie them a little bit differently than the one we're gonna tie tonight uh, but the reason why I will show you this that because this is the way my original favorite version of the black and orange is and I still of course use it a lot uh, even though I sometimes prefer flies without cone head and uh, but regardless the black and orange definitely a favorite fly and I've caught probably most salmon my personal salmon catches has been easily 40% in total on the black and orange. So let's get started. We start by taking a 1.8 millimeter hot orange tube that we put onto the your needle like so. Then I take three millimeter hot orange. This uh, will create a tied in hook holder. And I, as you can see, I've cut it a little bit diagonally, the same in the tip or in the front. This is makes it easier to go from the thick part down to the thin one. And this is easier to put the cone head on in the end. So that's why I've cut it like so. Taking a white thread for this fly, because we have some orange material that I don't want thread to shine through. The body work on this fly is not that much. I will just add a little bit of dubbing here and a drop of glue that will secure it. You don't really need it maybe because it this plastic material shrinks or get squeezed together when you're wrapping the thread but that will of course secure it a little bit more. Uh, Salmon signature dub, fire orange really suits this fly with this very nice shimmer and I'm cutting that out. You can also pull it out. Uh, you choose what you prefer to do. By cutting it, you get a little bit shorter fibers. And then I'm using this dubbing technique. And if you, this is new to you, you can look on some of my older videos uh, named dubbing techniques that shows and explains this a little bit more. Like so, then I sometimes go in like this and just pull a little bit of those fibers out. Okay, the first wing we're gonna add here is uh, the orange one, orange fox hair, or any other soft hair that you prefer to use. I prefer the fox hair because most of the times it has uh, its same structure and very seldom uh, gives me big surprises, which is a very nice feature. I'm taking out the wing here and I'm starting to look after the natural taper and when I start to find that I start removing a little bit of those extra hairs and I'm sliding this by pulling my finger back I'm now creating even more taper as you can see it's now longer and shorter which means it's shorter and longer here as well that means that we have now created a very nice tapered wing uh, almost creating the effect of having two wings in one tying wise fly tying wise uh, I'm gonna tie this reversed which means keep a track on what's up and down and forward and backward and the short hair should be on the upside now because when we are reversing this it gets the opposite so I'm attaching this and now when I will fold this back the long hair is on top. Fold it back, pinch it down. As you can see, very nice attachment point right there. And I'm gonna add a strand of gold angel hair, saltwater angel hair. I like this one because the strands are a little bit wider. One wrap and then fold it backwards and attach it. 
It's good if these strands are not identical in length because that will prevent them to get stuck together in, in the water. And I really like rooster hackle or saddle hackle because you have the good combination of uh, soft and a little bit stiffer hair. And I'll start by removing the things I don't want, which is all this here. It's a little bit too soft in my opinion. Pulling that off as well. And then I'm carefully just pulling back some, and cutting that out. That triangle there is my attachment point. And make sure to attach it on that hump and then beneath it. Because if you pinch it on the uh, thinner part, it will really stick. Sometimes that hump is a little bit uneven and when you pull, start hackling, you will pull it out. And then you take your scissors and that hard edge there, not the cutting side, but the other inside here. That's a sharp edge there, which I'm going to use to duplicate the hackle. And carefully tighten this and put the scissors against it and slowly and carefully just pull that upwards. And you can see it gets manipulated or modified. Now we can use it, work with it a little bit better. Make sure to do this on the side that will hit the hook or the tube first, which means I'm gonna uh, wrap this from me, not towards me. That means that it's the side that hits there first that I'm uh, manipulating by uh, the scissor. Okay, coming down here, stroke those back, pinch, and let go of the feather. Take a new reverse grip. If you just keep holding on to this, this will twin like this making it difficult to tie it properly. Covering as much as mo possible of that ugly attachment point there. And then the last wraps beneath, tight, close to each other, and then I'm attaching it like so. A few more turns there. Then I'm cutting that off. There we go. Take your brush and pull a little bit of those fibers aside. I want most of it to be from the side and down and run around. I don't want most of it to be on the wing part because we don't need it there really, in my opinion. And I'm taking black fox hair and I'm gonna make this one. I'm gonna have two black wings. That's why the first one here will be a little bit thicker than the last one. And there's a reason for that. Uh, if you're tying, for example, a fly without a cone head and you want to create a very small, nice head, the last wing or the last step should have as little material as possible, if you can. Which means, if, uh, same with if you're using very small cone heads, so that means if this one would have been thin and then you're adding a thick one in the end, uh, it's going to be a little bit more problematic. So I'm measuring this in, getting it to be a little bit longer than the orange one, and I'm cutting that off to have a clean, nice time in part there that can attach it. Reversed, that's the orange one. There we go, and I'm folding that one back as well. Making sure it covers the orange wing nicely. Now I'm taking the brush and just going through so it looks alright. The fly could be done here. As you can see, it already looks pretty good. But I'm gonna add a black hackle and one more black wing. In my opinion, it, it does look a little bit better when you have black and orange also in the hackle, not just the wing. Attaching it and really making sure that it's stuck beneath there. Same thing with the scissor. Put that against the hackle and carefully pull that up like so. And Take those back, coming down here, pull it back, pinch, release. 
reverse grip and then you just keep going covering that and the last turns down beneath here and then I'm attaching it so I'm cutting that off once again the brush point get those down a little bit have a look how the steps are going so far looks pretty good these kind of flies the little bit more Scandinavian tube uh, style with cone head and uh, double tubes uh, they tend to get a little bit more uh, filling or they, they tend to be a little bit bulkier which is not necessarily a bad thing all the time uh, this is how I uh, came to get the black and orange as a favorite it was tied like this now I uh, use it a little bit more in monkey style but this is still uh, a pattern and a version that I love to use and you can of course make it slimmer but it's a little bit easier in my opinion to create a very slim fly if you're tying without cone head and using US tubes instead pulling a little bit off remember this one should be a little bit thinner than the last one I'm creating a nice taper by pulling off a little bit of access hair here like so this one should be pretty thin Measuring in, this should be about the same length. And once again, it's tied reversed, makes the fly stronger, and it's nice and clean after every wing you have tied. There's nothing you need to cut and clean here. So that's it. That plus stronger fly, those two are the winning. Uh, concept with this tying technique so there we have it I'm gonna, gonna add the final touch to it the young cock on the sides there the cheeks this is cosmetic for us makes the fly looks look a little bit more salmon fly because if you look at modern tube flies compared to the old classic feather flies, the only thing that's really uh, very similar it is the cheeks. Because a lot of materials is uh, changed. So this is of course uh, directly draw your eyes to the fact that this is a salmon fly. But... I'm certain that this is purely cosmetic and something that we think looks very good. And it does. Measuring this, this should be about the third in length of the total wing length. The same with the hackle. You can see now I've chosen a hackle that creates one, two, three, a very good proportion. If the hackle would have been longer or if the cheeks are longer or shorter, fly will of course fish and you will catch fish on it but the proportions for the human eye it will look better if the those uh, steps are there or those things like a third of the uh, wing length for example now I'm adding a little bit of glue to the thread before I'm cutting it off a few laps here as you can see here I'm not even being very careful here but it's still a very small uh, head for the fact that I did uh, split up the black wing in two steps now I'm gonna put on the cone head I normally do that by taking the fly out of the vise minimize the risk of uh, breaking the needle and let's see we're here uh, silver cone head here and I'm going to put a drop of glue before I put that all the way in. So, and I'm pinching it here in the scissor so I can really pull that all the way. We want that to be close and edge to edge. We, want, we don't want to have a space in between the cone head 
and the wing and hackle it looks bad but salmon do not care I don't think so cutting off here a few millimeters and then I'm taking the lighter and I'm burning that creating a nice edge so the glue and that edge there will of course keep the cone head on and there we have it my I would say my favorite fly so far or overall if someone would say tell us use one more one salmon fly for the rest of your life uh, or one pattern one color combination I would say black and orange without any doubt I this works everywhere hope you enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned for more episodes